Hi, Alan Stratton from As Wood Turns. At the last meeting of Cascade Wood Turners, they made a challenge. They gave us a block of juniper and said, go make something of it. So, here we go. Let's see what we get. I'll couple it with a sea urchin. I attended the 2012 Utah Wood Turning Symposium. Among the pieces on display were sea urchin ornaments by Rex Burningham, Kurt Herzog, and Sally Alt. I liked them and decided to make one sometime. And then attending the Cascade Wood Turnings meeting, they issued a challenge, make something from a juniper blank they provided. My first thought was the sea urchin ornament I saw at the Utah Symposium. Most of those were hanging ornaments. I was a bit hung up on how to suspend them until I decided to put it on a small base similar to Sally Alt. This was my first project involving a finial, particularly at this scale. I must admit I was a bit worried. I checked out two Cindy Drozda videos showing her videos. After watching them, I had enough confidence to tackle my own. Part of the preparation of the sea urchin is to sand the upper and lower holes in the shell with a tapered dowel and sandpaper. While turning the taper, I practiced what I had learned from Cindy's video in rough form, then made two small finials from the piece of poplar I used for the tapered dowel. Poplar seemed to be an awful wood for small details, but turning up the RPMs, I managed to turn out my two practice pieces. I planned to rough turn my blank, then glue it to a Baltic birch waste block with a tenon. Next time I'll try it without the tenon, that seemed a bit overkill. I was also a bit worried whether the juniper would take fine detail on the turning. Roughing out the blank made me put a big spindle roughing gouge on my Christmas list. The second addition to my Christmas list came when trying to use calipers I inherited from somebody. My calipers did not hold a measure which made them near useless to measure the tenon diameter. To avoid constantly stopping the lathe to measure, I drilled a matching hole on a piece of scrap, sawed it through the middle and used it as my calipers. You can always make do with what you have on hand, although you cannot have too many tools. I made a rough pattern to determine the placement of the sea urchin, the size of the top finial, the size of the base spindle, and the size of the bottom. I used the golden mean to size rectangles for the three main blocks, top finial, sea urchin, and base. Within the two finial blocks, I used basic elements that Cindy Drozda had demonstrated. After rough turning the blank, going it to the voiced block, I cranked up the RPMs on the lathe as far as I dared. I don't know the number as my lathe does not have a meter, but it was just below the vibration point, very much on the high end. I used a quarter inch spindle gouge for most of the detail work and a half inch skew to refine the V grooves. The toughest part of the project was actually sizing the turning to the sea urchin. I wanted the top of the sea urchin to shell to rest on a shoulder, but have very little showing between this shoulder and the top finial. The other tough part was to size the turning to the bottom of the sea urchin so the sea urchin would be tight and have very little space between it and the bottom turning. Both details required a lot of trial fittings. Compared to the de these details, turning the finial portions was easy. One of Cindy Drozda's main points was to work from the top down. Turn sand and finish each section while still well supported before moving further. It was good advice and I, I followed it very almost religiously. So the top has a little bit of a cove on between it and the, the point and the top ring then a long tapered into what Cindy called an onion then a little bit of a detail into a uh, cove above, above the sea urchin. Then below that, little, little half bead, little bead groove, cove, coming out to another element on the bottom. For sanding, I started with 220 grit and finished with 400 grit. Finish was a shellac friction polish. Although I mimicked Cindy's design, I did not copy her. I tried to, I tried to continue the top curve that I saw from the sea urchin shell into the cove in the top finial. The curve from the bottom of the sea urchin flows into the base. I think both were successful in the end. And fed the, the sea urchin in the end, 
carefully turn off the whole unit and I like it. 